blush. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah. 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 When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. And all he has done for me. See, I remember when the Lord keeps telling me when I was abandoned and rejected and I was adopted three months old. My dad took me from this lady that was taking care of me because I was adopted. They didn't want me. My dad didn't have me. So I had to be sent somewhere else. But it all worked out for the good because my heavenly father took care of me. He sent me where I need to be so I could be where I am today. So I thank you, heavenly father. Lord, I know I couldn't do nothing without you. Lord, I thank you every day, Father, for your grace and your mercy. Father, when we think of you, oh, you've done for us. Lord, you did so good to us, Lord God. You didn't think of robbery to come into stinking flesh. Lord, you think good of us because we messed up at the beginning. Our forefather, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve Lord, they disobeyed your word. So, Father, we pray, we thank you for sending Jesus, the blood that sacrificed for our sins. We thank you for the blood, Lord God, the blood that has saved us from sin and death. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that came to convict us and direct us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, so much because you are the Heavenly Father that provides for us. Lord, you're the Heavenly Father that protects us. You're the Heavenly Father that heals us. You're the Heavenly Father to deliver us. You're the Heavenly Father to set us free. You're the Heavenly Father that set us apart. You're the Heavenly Father that gave us victory. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father God, as we come worshiping you today. Father, we just can forever thank you for this day. And so, Father, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins as we come before the house, before the throne of grace and mercy. And, Father, we come acknowledging you as our Lord and our Savior. Father, we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I was glad when they said it to me. Come into the house of the Lord. So I thank you, Father, for all the saints of God. Father, I thank you for our pastor, Lord God. I thank you for Lady Ty. Father, I thank you for every saint that God is in this house. Father, I thank you even for those enemies that come in our path to make us stronger, Lord God. Father, we thank you for everything you're doing in our life. And so, Father, we acknowledge you as our Lord and our Savior. You're the King of kings. You're the Prince of peace. Lord, you are omnipotent. You are omnipresent. You are omniscient. Lord, you are God all by yourself. There is no one like you. And, Father, we love you. Oh, Father, we love you with all of our heart, with all our mind, our soul, and our strength. Father, we thank you for waking us up another day. Lord, we thank you for waking us up another day. Some people didn't wake up today, Lord God. Some people had a mind to worship you, Lord God. Some people don't know you like we do, Father. So, Lord, we come before you this Sunday. Celebrate Father's Day, Lord God, because you're the main Father. There's no one like you, Jesus. And so, Father, we come at you to anoint each and every one of us in this house. Father, we looking for a breakthrough. Father, we looking for supernatural miracles. Father, we looking for something supernatural that our minds and our eyes have never seen before. So, Father, we expecting it right now, Father God. We bind every demonic entity, every forces of the enemy. You're not welcome here. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of this place. You have no welcome room in here right now. Father God, we ask you to touch every youth in this place. Everyone that's online, Father God. I pray that you raise up warriors, Lord God, to speak your word, Lord Jesus. Father, deliver us from the curses of the family's bloodline, Father. Deliver us and set us free, Lord, that we may be bold soldiers. Father, we pray right now for your word. Father, we pray for your word to go in us richly. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God into salvation to everyone that believes. Help us to believe and have faith in you, Lord Jesus. Help us to operate, Lord, with obedience, Lord. So we just lean that to our own understanding. But in all our ways, we acknowledge you, Father God. So, Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to show up in this place, Lord God. Father, someone needs to be breakthrough. Someone needs to be healed. So, Father, do it right now, Father God. Let your will be done right now in each and every one of our lives. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We cannot do it without you because you are so awesome. Lord, you are so worthy. 
Father, you said when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So, Lord, we praise you right now, Lord God. We praise you. We're looking for you to show up. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, Lord God. Father, we ask you to touch the praise team as they come forth, Lord. As the praises go up, Lord. Touch each and every one in the special way, Lord God. We pray for Lady Ty, Lord, as she come in here. All the family, first family, job, bring them. Touch to all the youth, especially, Lord, the next generation. So, Father, we pray that you touch everyone suffering, alcoholics, all the addicts, all the homeless, all the prostitutes, all those that are sick and bound. Lord, we ask you to touch some in a special way. Send someone in their path, Lord God. Help us to have a word to speak life into them, Lord God. Father, we pray for the quickening of the Holy Spirit in this place today. And Father, for all those that have not known you or do not know you, Father, I pray that you give them the heart to repent, to change from our wicked ways, and acknowledge you in everything we do, Father. So Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us. As we forever praise you, because you are our Heavenly Father. There's no one like you. And we thank you for giving us life and breath. We thank you for giving us a mind to serve you. We thank you for giving us a heart to love you. And Father, we forever gracious bless you. And Lord, we humbly thank you for giving us the opportunity and the privilege to be your hands, feet, and voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're giving you an invitation this morning. Amen? Amen. To praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to read from Psalms 150. This is our invitation. Hallelujah. Psalms 150. So God is letting you know right now this is what he wants you to do. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to read this. Now I need you to do, I need you to do what he's requesting and he's wanting you to do. Hallelujah. And he's saying in this word, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. And then this is your invitation. Because if you have breath this morning, if you can speak, if you can make some noise, this is your invitation. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So open up your mouths, all ye people. And praise the Lord. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, he's been so good to you. Come on, come on, come on. Father God, we love you. Father God, we praise you. Father God, we thank you. You're worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think of your goodness, and all that you've done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for healing me. I thank you for protection. I praise you, Jesus. That car could have hit me. That truck could have ran into me. But thank you for your arms of protection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have another chance. I have another opportunity to give you the praise. Lord God, hallelujah. Thank you for touching my body when I was sick. Do I have any witnesses out there that can tell you that God touched your body through your sickness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Didn't have any money in my pocket, but thank you, Jesus, because you told me that you're rich in houses and in land. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. I had some financial difficulties, but you stepped in, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many can say that he's a lawyer in a courtroom? Hallelujah. Some of us have, have had that testimony that you know that God is a lawyer in a courtroom. Hallelujah. 
And the best thing that we know is that everything we need is in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today is your opportunity. Hallelujah. To just let God know. We're not going to look at you funny. We're not going to sit you down. You're not in that church. We're not going to sit you down. If you feel the presence of the Lord, go ahead and give God the praise. Let God have his way in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know your praise today. Hallelujah. Maybe that weapon that you need for what you're going to be confronted with this week. But through my praise, you're going to, I'm going to still be victorious. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, we welcome you in this place. Father God, we welcome you in this place. Yes, Lord. We want your presence to move in this place. Shower us down with your anointing. Hallelujah. So that if someone is burdened with yokes, we want that anointing to break that yoke. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord.
worship him. Have your way. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It's something about giving God praise. I realize if you really, if you really tap into the presence of the Lord, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen if you tap into his presence. In this song, we just want to glorify him because he deserves the glory. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, move a little. If you can move, come on, let's move. Be glorified. Be glorified. Yeah. 
so glad to see you here this morning. Amen. Make sure it's somebody that's not on your row. There you go. Good to see you. Good morning.
put them hands together one more time and give Jesus some praise. Come on, if you really love him, hallelujah. You ought to shout, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He is our heavenly father. And since it's Father's Day, then none other better way than celebrating him by glorifying him this morning. You may be seated in the presence of God. We're so glad that you have came out to worship this morning in spirit and in truth. We welcome you to First Fruits Community Church. Amen. A church is loving God and loving people. Amen. If you don't feel the love of God by now, I think something's wrong with you. I'll pray with you during the altar call. But I feel the love of God in this. Everybody feel the love of God. Just, just, just want to double check. Just, all right. That's good. That's good. The love of our fathers in this house, and, and we certainly love him right on back. And, you know, we can't love God without loving one another. Amen. And so we praise God for the love that's in this house. Amen. And, and the fact that we can come together and just enjoy the presence of God and the presence of his people in Jesus' name. Can we put our hands together for our first lady this morning? Looking so beautiful over there. First Lady Bellinger, we thank God for you. Amen to our family, to our elders, Elder DeWeese, amen, and his lovely wife, amen, Elder Washington and Lady Washington in their absence this morning, amen. Praise God, our ministers, our elders, our deacons, our leaders, and all of you that's in this house, amen. I'm looking across, just want to double check, do we have any first-time guests? If that's you, just, just wave your hand like that. I want to make sure I'm not skipping over anybody. And, hey, there she is. We, we ain't going to make you get up and do nothing. Just, let's put our hands together just praise God for our, for our guests, amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Let's show some, some first fruits type of love, amen. We are absolutely glad that you're hanging out with us and fellowshipping, and I just believe that before you leave here, God has something great for you, amen, and just like he has something laid up in store for all of us, God is speaking at all times, and I just love him, amen, most of all, because he's my father, amen, hallelujah, happy, 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 happy Father's Day, come on, can we shout for our fathers in the house, we love our dads, we we, we love our dads. Come on, we love our dads. Where, where all the real dads at? Stand up. Where all, where all the real dads at? Stand up. Where, where all the real dads at? Stand up. Stand up. Where all the real dads at? Stand up. Hallelujah, man. We got some fathers up in this house, and they do such a wonderful job. Amen. It, it ain't easy being a dad, y'all. We, we, we got a lot we got to juggle. We got a whole lot we got to do. But I just have a, a little video. If we can hit them lights, amen, up front and in the back. I just got a little video to, 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 to help you enjoy Father's Day a little bit more. Oh, man, y'all, we, we can do this. We can do this. I'm, I'm still learning how to build stuff. We can do this. We, but I will threaten to pull the car over if y'all don't act, act right in the back seat there. So, oh, man, it's about being a godly man, amen, and representing and reflecting Jesus. Let's put our hands together for our dads one more time, man. Y'all are so appreciated. Y'all are so appreciated. 
that if you are a dad, then right after service, we got a little surprise for you as you leave. It's only for the dads. Only for the dads. So I'm going to need somebody to be policing to make sure ain't nobody talking about, oh, I'm taking this home. No, to celebrate my heavenly father. No, baby, put that down. Because it's only for the dads in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, God is good. <laughs> Just want something to make you laugh a little bit, make you laugh. Got a couple, couple quick announcements, amen, uh, just to bring before you. Uh, hopefully, y'all were able to join that fast last week. Uh, raise your hand if you joined in on the fast last week, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Thank God for you. I appreciate, amen, your sacrifice. I appreciate you taking that personal time with your father, amen, to draw closer to him, amen. When we fast and when we pray, uh, it's designed not just to turn down the plate and make ourselves starve or nothing. It's really designed for us to get in line with the will and the way of God. Amen. And when we fast, not only does it benefit us, amen, but it benefits the whole entire family. Amen. And so, so if you fasted, you can best believe God is working on behalf of somebody else in this house because you prayed and because you fasted. Amen. And when we come together and we pray and fast, things change. Things happen. And that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting God to continue to move. We're going to continue to do some fasts throughout the year. Uh, as we always do, every Wednesday we fast from 6 in the morning to 6 at night. So keep that at the forefront of your mind. Put it on your calendar. Set about 10 alarms in the morning before 6 a.m. So you don't get up and do like I do sometimes and mess up and grab a cup of coffee and be like, oh, shucks, it's fast day. All right. Okay, it's just me. I'm glad y'all don't have that habit, you know. But... Uh, <laughs> Do whatever it takes because it's worth it. Amen. It's definitely worth it. And, you know, if you fast and couple it with prayer, uh, then that's really when it kind of kicks in. And so I want you to push and press your way out here on Wednesdays that we can come together, that we can pray together, that we can ask God to continue to pour out his miracles upon this church. Anybody need a miracle this morning? Amen. Or you know somebody that needs a miracle or you know somebody that knows somebody that needs a blessing. Amen. Well, listen, the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. So don't ever think that your prayers are only hitting the ceiling and not really being heard. God is always listening, and he always has a plan to answer your prayers according to his perfect will. Amen. So don't forget, push your way out, especially Wednesdays, man. We started off our summer series in the Psalms. Have y'all been enjoying that? Man, listen, last Wednesday we talked about the Psalms of Lament. And, and, and I don't think we realize that God wants us to lament. It's okay for us to sorrow. It's okay for us to grieve. Because what lament does, it gives voice to your pain and a path to a deeper faith in God. Amen. So I'm just giving you a clip. You can go back and watch the replay. Amen. But we're learning about what God wants us to understand about him in the Psalms and what the heartbeat of worship really looks like. So this summer series is Summer in the Psalms. And I want you to get out here on Wednesdays so that you can partake of it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, my wife and I are getting ready to go out of town this weekend. We got a couple other people going out of town. We got some folk heading out of town. We're going to celebrate Sister Michaela Johnson all the way in the back. She just ducked as soon as I said it. But she's, she's uh, turning another year older. Why don't you stand up in the back so we can see you. Everybody turn around and wave at her just to embarrass her. There you go. That's what you get for ducking, baby. But uh, we, going, we heading out of town this weekend. Hallelujah, to celebrate her birthday. And so we won't be here this Sunday, amen, but we got everybody uh, that's going to be in place and, and, and doing what you do like we always do, amen. I think uh, we got a couple ministers lined up. Uh, yeah, you heard it right. We're going to have two people preaching this coming Sunday. Oh, y'all ain't have that? You know when you're preaching, you're done, you throw the mic to somebody else and then they take it from there? Yeah, so just, I ain't going to tell you. That's all. I'm just going to leave it right there. But uh, we're going we to have a really good service. All you got to do is invite some folk to get out here, fill up these seats, that they might come out here and be blessed. Amen. Uh, one thing we do want to say, though, that is, I think it was this Friday and Saturday, the ladies were supposed to come together for prayer. Uh, they're rescheduling the prayer for this Friday and the fellowship this Saturday. So that will be rescheduled. And uh, just be in tune. Keep a good eye out on your text messages uh, for any announcements coming up on when that will be rescheduled. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, listen, God is good, and 
And he has blessed us so much, and it is time to give. Amen. Let's praise God and celebrate the opportunity, amen, to be a blessing. Come on, let's put our hands together. Amen. You woke up this morning, you ate something, you put some good clothes on. I put a new Father's Day suit on, man. We are so blessed, amen, hallelujah, to have what we have, to, to be able to see each other, to be able to celebrate one another. And God has just blessed us with resources that we can continue the work that we're doing here, y'all. We have a work to do. Did y'all see the text that went out? Did you? You see the message that went out this week? Yes. Okay. Somebody said yes. That's good. All right. Our systems are still working. So we, we, we got some stuff we want to do, man. We, we, we got some security cameras we got to put in. We got to think it's about 13 more cameras we got to install uh, because right now the only thing that's covered is outside. Uh, and then we got like we got the inside covered for security. And then this house, you got you got cameras that go live, but you see that camera on the way back. I bet y'all ain't never noticed that you being watched. Big brother watched. No, I'm just kidding. But we do have security, amen. But what we don't have covered is a lot of other spots. And we want to create an environment where it's really a safe environment, very secure environment. That if your kids are in classrooms, we can look real quick, make sure everything is looking good. That if they're if we're over there celebrating, we can see we got all eyes everywhere. If, if God's all seeing, we're gonna be close to it, amen. So it costs a little pretty penny to get those uh uh, cameras installed. So I'm, I'm just giving you time to get your tithes and offerings. When you get, you can stand. Uh, but we also got a couple other fundraisers and things that we're doing. So we got to raise some capital. So give your tithes, give your offering this morning. Give it with a cheerful spirit, with a sacrificial spirit. Amen. With a faithful spirit. And you know how God blesses. Amen. A cheerful giver. Uh, our Savior himself said it's more blessed to what? Give them to receive, amen, and hallelujah, whether that's your resources, time, talent, treasures, whatever it may be, it is a blessing to be able to give, amen. Think about how much God has given unto you. You ever been without and then somebody just pops up out of nowhere and blesses you? Man, isn't that a blessed feeling, amen, that God had somebody else out there thinking about you and say, go over there and bless that brother, go bless that sister, Man, I'll never forget, I was in Newark, New Jersey uh, for a convocation, and I had no money in my pocket. God made a way for me to get there, and I was like, shoot, well, it's only like a six-day convocation. I can fast the whole time if I need to, uh, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. I knew God was going to take care of me, and sure enough, I, guess what? I was at prayer, 6 o'clock morning prayer, got up off my face, was heading back to my seat, and this, this, this older mother walks up to me. And she's like, praise the Lord, son. You know, she was real short, too, with them old mothers. You, you look at them, they say something, you fall out in the spirit. And she reached to, she said, the Lord told me to give you this. And she put a big old wad of money in my hand. And boy, did I eat breakfast that morning, y'all. God is a provider. And I even treated some others to breakfast, amen, because see, he gives that we might bless others, amen. And so that's the blessing. Listen, we wouldn't even have this church if it wasn't for y'all. I know we put it all on God, but God puts it all on you. <laughs> we wouldn't have lights if it were. We wouldn't have this AC that wouldn't work last Sunday if it wasn't for you. And, and the man that uh, Brother Fred Wilder called out here to come fix it. We tried to get it fixed for uh, Sunday evening, which, by the way, who was out here with Apostle Davenport? That, that was insane again. That's just, <laughs> we praise God for that word. But, yeah, the AC went out, and we were able to get that fixed immediately so you could come in here and be comfortable. And so whether it's those things or anything else that we're doing, amen, it's because God uses you. God uses people that ain't never stepped foot in this church to fund this church, to make sure our doors stay open, to make sure that we can come together in fellowship. And listen, y'all, we can sometimes, I'm just going to throw this out, we can, it's easy to kind of take that stuff for, for granted. You know, I've seen churches shut down on members, you know, out of nowhere, it seems like. And, and not that they wanted to shut down, but they had to shut down because the resources weren't coming in. I thank God we're not that church. Hallelujah. I thank God that he's used all of us, hallelujah, to keep this place a place where we could come together and worship. We could, we, we could come together and watch people get saved. We could come together and build one another up in our most holy faith. Amen. And so if anything, when you sow and you plant your tithes and your offerings in this building, in this work, remember you're funding an eternal work. Work. All right. Hallelujah. Your money ain't just going away in the air. You're funding soul work. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody has been blessed through this ministry, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If anybody has been saved in this ministry, shout hallelujah. If anybody's been healed in this ministry, shout hallelujah. If anybody's been encouraged by your brothers and sisters here, shout hallelujah. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for every tithe giver. Hallelujah. For everyone that's given their tenth this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. We ask, Lord, that as they give their first fruits into this house, that you would bless the rest, Lord, the other 90%, Lord. That not only would you bless their resources, you would bless their energy, you would bless their bodies, you would bless their mental capacity, you would bless their emotional well-being, you would bless them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Hallelujah. That you would even rebuke the adversary this morning on every side hallelujah oh God that you would put a hedge round about them hallelujah and, and upset the enemy this morning hallelujah based off of the seed that's being sowed this morning father we thank you for every person giving an offering this morning hallelujah that are saying look according to my free will I give I sacrifice and I bless the house of the Lord father we ask that you would just take this offering that you would touch it Lord that you would use this substance uh, to forward your work here and you know we will give you the praise we will give you all the glory and we will give you all the honor in Jesus name we pray in the church shout amen hallelujah in the church shout amen and amen you can remain standing if you have a tangible offering of course right after service Deacon Jones will be standing at the door and you can drop that off in Jesus name but as you stand I want to read into your hearing out of the letter uh, written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus. Uh, that's the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. And we are going to go to one verse. That's verse 4. And when you have it, say amen. 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 That's good. Y'all own it this morning. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture an admonition of the Lord. Reading that one more time. And ye fathers, everybody shout fathers. Father. Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Father, your word is already a light. It's a lamp. It's righteousness. It's peace in the Holy Ghost. Lord, hallelujah, you have your word and your spirit and your blood all concurring together at the same time this morning in this place. Father, so we ask that you'd wash us with your blood, hallelujah, that you would sanctify us with your spirit and that you would speak to us through your word and that you would bless every soul under the sound of my voice this morning, hallelujah, as we articulate your message into their spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and the church say amen. Amen. As you're seated, I want to introduce to you a message entitled, A Father's Purpose and a Father's Power. Amen. A Father's Purpose, amen, and a Father's Power. Uh, have Y'all saw that tragedy that just happened? It had been like maybe two or three months back when that ship lost control up in Baltimore and, and just tore the whole bridge down. It looked like that ship ain't had no captain. There was no... No, 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 nobody controlling that ship, basically, is what happened. And even though it was only for a few minutes, look at the tragedy that comes when you got a ship without a captain. Or look at the tragedy that happens, amen, when you have a team without a coach. Okay. 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 I don't think I've even honestly seen that, but having a team without a coach is a problem because there's no leadership. There's no instruction. There's no guidance there. Yeah, so, so ships without captains is an issue. Teams without coaches is an issue, and children without fathers is an issue. So I said, Lord, <laughs> this is Father's Day. We're going to focus on fathers. And I started looking up a bunch of stuff, and, and you think about the absence of leadership, the absence of direction, the absence of wisdom in all of these scenarios, particularly fathers, produces a whole lot of confusion. It produces a lot of instability. Amen? Can the church say amen? amen? Amen. It produces a whole lot of missed potential when the fathers are absent. And so in many ways, this is what happens in our families when, when dads aren't present, when, when, when they might be there, but they're not fulfilling God's purpose. Oh, because you can be present but absent at the same time. You can, you can be in the same room and not doing anything you should be doing as a dad. But, but, uh, but, but, but you know, the, the reason why I'm painting the picture this way is because fathers play a very critical role in the lives of their children. Can the church say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And, and not just in the roles of the lives of their children, but in broad society. Like fathers play such a key part 
And that's why I want to explore for a few moments, even though we took one scripture. I got more statistics than I have scripture because the scripture is well-weighted. But I'm bringing secular statistics in to, to paint a picture this morning. Can I share with you what I discovered? What, what I discovered that, of course, in our society, we face a crisis of fatherhood. It's, we're in a bad crisis right now. Many children are growing up without the presence of their dad, without the guidance of their dad, without the support of their dad. Hallelujah. And according to these statistics, I was reading that approximately one in four children, one in four children in the United States grow up without their dad. That's about 18.4 million children without their dads in the home. They grow up without a dad in the home, y'all. And that number is projected to continue to rise. And what does that reflect? It reflects a very significant and a very growing issue in our society today. We already see the impacts of it. The absence of a father affects the children in very impactful ways. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it influences their emotional well-being, their social well-being, and, and even their academic development. And so I, I started, I, I was like, I got to dig deeper into this. And so I pull up some statistics. If you don't mind me, I'll be looking down and reading a little bit. But the impact of fatherlessness is so evident in the United States that the emotional and psychological effects are staggering. When I was reading this, I said, my God, children without active father figures are more likely to experience emotional distress, including, watch this, higher ranks of anxiety, higher rates of depression, and there are also increased the risk of engaging in substance abuse and exhibiting behavioral problems. I know, hallelujah, how easy it is to fuss at kids that got behavioral problems, but we need to kind of point the needle to the fathers this morning. Now, I'm not here to condemn because we got the best fathers in the world, and I'm just I'm just, I'm just painting a picture for you. Hallelujah. The educational impact, when I read this, was even more staggering, that fatherless children often face academic challenges with a higher uh, dropout rates out of school um, to lower academic performance if they try to stick with it compared to those who have the fathers active in their household. And so the lack of paternal involvement diminishes children's motivation and their ability to succeed in school. Can we put our hands together for all these children that are succeeding at First Fruits Community Church? Amen. Father or not, they're pushing and they're moving forward. And hallelujah. And, 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 and you, you might even be a man this morning that's not a dad, but you can be a father figure. Hallelujah. So, so, so I want to keep painting this picture, but, but the fatherless children have a lot of educational problems. And, and there's also this increased risk of poverty and crime. So if a child grows up in a fatherless home, they are more likely statistically to live in poverty. And they're more likely statistically to be at a higher risk of engaging in criminal activities. Mm -hmm. I had a stepdad, but I didn't have a Y'all say it, father. Okay, okay. Hard worker, but I needed some more than that. Now, I can't blame nobody. I always got to own up to what I did. For all that trouble I got in, I got in. But I wonder, well, I always think about it, and this ain't a knock to my, my biological dad either, but if, if that dad was there the whole time, I think, I think a lot of those traps I fell in, I wouldn't have fell in. So the statistics tell us just in general, I mean, the studies show a very strong correlation between fatherlessness and higher rates of juvenile delinquency and incarceration. And so watch this. So, it's, so somebody say erosion. Yeah, the erosion of fatherhood. Oh, God. The erosion of masculinity in American society is such a complex issue, it's not like a one thing will fix it all type of situation because there's so many variety of factors. There's cultural shifts that we're experiencing. There's socioeconomic changes that we're experiencing. Hallelujah, ranging from all different walks of life. And look at how the media portrays 
men. And look at all the legal challenges men face when they try to be that dad that wants to be in their children's life but are hindered by the legal courts, the family courts. And so all of this, and then let, let's, let's stack something else on top of this, the changing of gender roles in the United States of America. And so this whole, the feminist movement started it, by the way. And the push for, watch this, gender equality really kicked it off. Because all of that led to a very significant shift in what God's traditional roles of gender and family looks like. So while, yes, some of those things worked good for women in the sense of empowered women and things of that sort. But, it, 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 the, the, man, the path to hell is paved with good intent. And, and there wasn't good intent behind the feminist movement. And there was never real true good intent behind all of this women's liberation movement. Because it was designed by Satan himself who got and operated in our government to cause the family to erode. So what happened? Uh, men were marginalized. Come on. Come on. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hit that spirit of Jezebel that brought that stuff into our nation. Hallelujah. Because I don't care how much a woman is empowered. And, and we complain about women not being empowered and women not getting this and women not. But listen, now the men are on the other side of that. We have been marginalized. I don't need no man. The, yes, you do. They might got toys, but you need a man. Okay, let me, let, me, let me focus down here because they they, 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 too, they too spiritual. So they marginalize the role of men. And that leads to confusion. That leads to uncertainty about what it even means to be a man. The definition of what it means to be a man has shifted completely in our modern society. And so you have these negative stereotypes, shout stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, because the TV, the, the media, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, every media outlet out there, Facebook, Twitter, all of our social media outlets, all of them, hallelujah, portray fathers in a negative light. They frequently depict us as incompetent. They often tell us that, that, that we're in, irresponsible. Yeah, and, and that men are emotionally detached. Yeah, and if you are conditioned with the same message for decades upon decades, then of course men have a paradigm of thinking these things when that's really not who they are, but they've been told that's what you are. Hallelujah, that men aren't attached to their emotions. That they, oh God, y'all, I come to preach this morning. I, I, I could take a statistics and preach. We believe the lies that they tell us. So what does it do? It's all designed to undermine the perceived value of fatherhood. And what does it contribute to? It contributes to the decline in respect for the men. Look at somebody say respect. Yeah, yeah. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Okay. When the, listen, ah, oh God. Mother's Day, y'all had y'all's day. It's our day today. Where the brothers at? Hallelujah. And, and listen, I'm just saying that to make you laugh because I know the ladies in here and I, I know you're godly women and you, you agree with what's being said and you support the role of dads and, and men in the body of Christ. And I want to tell you, though, it's a bad problem in our society because most of society doesn't respect the men. And then stack and layer on top of that the lack of positive role models. I mean, positive representations of strong, responsible, emotionally engaged fathers is so much less common in the media. You don't see that. When's the last time you've seen that on TV in a commercial? I'll tell you what I see in commercial. I'm gonna tell. I, I, it's about four more lines down. I'm gonna tell you what I see in them commercials. I don't see responsible men. 
And so the lack of that visual, the lack of the positive role models affects our self-perception. Brothers, hallelujah, it leads to disengagement from your role in the family. And if you're going to have a ministry, it's going to be your family first. Hallelujah. Don't tell me you're a preacher, you can't take care of your... Don't tell me you're a pastor and you don't love your son. You don't love your daughter. Holl- oh, God. You, you treat your wife like crap. Take it off, but you treat everybody else good. You, 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 you fell into the trap of this government. Oh, yeah. That's what. Yeah. You fell into the trap of our government. Oh, oh I got scripts. You want me to take? I, I won't even go to King James. I'll go to the Geneva Bible. If you, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you, 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 we fall into the trap of the government. Because what y'all don't know is King James didn't want this said. So, so in, in, in the translation of the, the Hebrew and the Greek into the, into the English, amen, they, he took scriptures and changed them. So even when you read the book of Ephesians in King James Version, you're not reading the authentic version of it. So I'm going to read to you something. In the Bible, in, in, in Ephesians, my God, it says, this is, this is what the original scripture said. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Y'all hear that, right? But against principalities, against powers, and against the worldly governors. Comma. Okay, yeah, let's pause there. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. No, no. Against principalities and powers, against the worldly governors, the worldly governors, comma, the princes of darkness of this world. Our governors are the princes of darkness in this world. Screw Republicans and screw the Democrats and the independents. They are wicked. None of them got the Holy Ghost. And so the governors and those that are in government positions, hallelujah, are designed to destroy you. And where was their target? Men. Because if I could destroy the dad, I could hit the whole family. King James said, take that out. Change that up so you don't fully understand what the scripture's saying. And so we have this lack of positive role models, and then we have economic pressure. Somebody say pressure. Men, you ever been under economic pressure? What are the men that, that ever had a burden to pay a bill? Raise your hand. You, you ain't never had no weight to pay no bill? You, you ain't working. A man don't work, don't eat. You, don't need, you need to fast all week. Raise your hand if you were stressed out about trying to pay a bill. Electric bill coming up, mortgage bill coming up, this bill coming up, that bill coming up. I get it. Not in here, but I know, okay, I'm going to say it just to make somebody upset because I can. You're like, I know you depend on your women to take care of that. I know you depend on her salary. I know you depend. But you know what, man? God originally set us up to do that. And so it is a blessing if, if you have a woman that comes along, she's that help that's fit for you, and she adds now to it. But brothers, we are called to supply. We are called to provide because our Father does the same thing for us. And so with that comes pressure. So we have economic instability and the pressures of providing for family, and it strains the father-child relationship. Let me ask this question. Any dads in here ever worked so much and felt bad that you didn't get to spend a lot of time with your kids? You're trying to figure that out. That's a bad feeling, ain't it? You're doing the right thing. But you, you got this, this, this strain, this, this, this pressure, this, this, this relationship, this, this weight. And, 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 and fathers who are, watch this, unemployed or underemployed feel inadequate. And then they start feeling disconnected. Come on, I know I'm preaching to somebody. And they start, and, 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 and that leads to disengagement in the family. 
because they're so focused on not being able to do this or struggling to do that that they detach themselves from everything else because they feel so bad about it. Hallelujah. And, and then you got this whole thing we call work-life balance, amen, which, it, it, you know, it's just it's so much. This ain't even everything. I had to dummy these statistics down because I didn't have enough time to go over it. But we have this work-life balance where we're trying to figure out how do I work, how do I manage life, how do I balance all this stuff out. Got long hours. Anybody working long hours? Stressful jobs. Amen. Pressure to succeed professionally. Trying to meet everybody's expectations of you. Fathers. You need a whole lot of energy for fatherhood. Then you want to be a part of your child's life, but you got to deal with the family court. Because can I just be real? Can I, it's okay if I be real. Most of the family courts ain't, ain't, ain't trying to give the dad nothing. They, they, they don't care about you. They, they have been set up by the government eh, to keep the dad away from the children. The Lord stepped in my courtroom like you was testifying. About, and he was my lawyer. And I got custody of my daughter. But I'm telling you right now, that don't happen in most circumstances for the brothers. Instead of helping them out, take the kids from them. My God, help me preach this. Yeah. And so what does that do? So if a father already knows that, right, there's a situation where a dad is trying to be able to get more time with their children, but then they're afraid to even fight that monster of having to go to family court in the first place, and then the enemy gets in there and discourages that man from doing so. And then slap child support on there. I might get in trouble on this one. Back me up. I ain't going to get in trouble because men are supposed to support their children financially, period. But what I wrote down here is insane when you look at all of these strict child support laws and, oh, God, all these alimony laws and, while it is necessary, it creates this financial burden that leads to further disengagement. Because now all of a sudden, you have a man that was already struggling, may have really, truly, authentically wanted to be a part of that child's life, but they're struggling. And now they get locked up because they can't pay the support. How are they going to pay support if they're locked up in prison? Why don't we put support systems in place to help these dads become the father they're supposed to be? The reason why we don't is because the world don't want that. They don't care about you, Dad. Oh. Oh, and then God forbid. Brother Daryl, can you stand up? Can, can you come up here? Can we put our hands together for this dad? Come, come up here, Dad. I, I chose you because you look like a man. I, I want to look like you when I grow up. That's a solid whole man. Brother Malcolm, come up here, man. Come, come up, come up, brother. Great, come up. Where them solid men at? All these men up in here solid. We ain't got no men in here that ain't solid. Look, look at this masculine man with his royal blue on and shining shoes. And my God, look like he been bench pressing before church started this morning. And hallelujah, we carry weights and he lift them. Look at your neighbor and say, "This is masculinity." Oh, but the world calls us toxic. Y'all can, can be seated. They call it toxic masculinity because they want to destroy the image of God. Woo, Jesus. So what does the world do? They've gained traction in critiquing traditional masculine traits, and they say we are harmful. No, God, I am preaching, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And what does this lead to? When they say toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, why is it toxic? Because it doesn't form and shape what the pattern of the world is trying to create man to look like. And so it devalues. Somebody shout devalue. Yeah, it devalues men. It discourages them from embracing their role as a strong, nurturing figure. So that's where you get this. 
can I say this? <laughs> this is where you get this look. That ain't men. And it just ain't manly. Why every man got to be feminine? Okay, I'm just going to say that. Why does every man got to act like a woman? Why? Oh, it done got worse since I was little up to now. And it's, let, let me tell you something. It's only going to get worse. It's anti-Christ at its core. It's anti-man at its core. Anti-mankind at its core. If I can mess up the image of man, I can mess up the image of the woman because the woman becomes the man. And the man becomes the woman. That's twisted. That's perverted. And then you're going to call the church homophobic because we're just speaking the truth of God in love, saying that's not what God intended. We're not homophobic. We're God-oriented. We understand what God created in the beginning, and we don't budge on that. And listen, God delivers people from that stuff, but the point of the message this morning is fathers have a purpose, and when they're operating in the purpose, they're operating in God's power. It ain't your purpose to act like a woman speak but I, that's all I had I understand you grew up in a fatherless home I get that you was raised by them single parents the women that did their job put your hands together for the ladies that did that but that don't mean your son should be acting like you there's certain things a woman will never be able to give their child so if the world ain't gonna step up we got to step up as men in the house to show them what men look like even as we try to figure this thing out. And so in this society, we have a redefinition of masculinity. Hallelujah. Takes all of this stuff out. Takes traditional masculine strength away, Brother Wilder. And what it introduces is emotional intelligence and relational skills. You expect me to be... I'm sorry if I don't relate like a woman. I'm not a woman. I'm a man. And proud to be masculine. Absolutely excited that every, every part of me is masculine. Because a true man celebrates a true woman. And a true woman and a true man together has a true family. So they redefine and so what do we do men struggle to find our place in society why because our our values are no longer valuable to this world they say we're traditional i'm gonna be traditional to the sound of the trumpet baby i don't care how modern the world or the church get Because what you ain't going to see up here is a bunch of men looking like women and women act, acting like men. And we're going to love on you and we're going to watch the Holy Ghost fill you and transform you and save you and conform you into the true image of who you are. Because that is who you, God wants you to be the woman, the man that you have been called to be. But what we ain't going to do in this church is, is bring the mix in. It ain't going to be that. And so, I'm just getting started. So, so the, no, I'm almost through. The crisis creates a disruption of the equilibrium of the family unit. Brings instability, brings brokenness. And so, there's a very critical need that we activate and we start engaging fatherhood in the lives of our children, saints of God. And so I wrote down here that God designed the dads, the fathers, to be the head of the household. That he is called, according to the scriptures, to provide leadership. Come on, where the fathers at? We're called, hallelujah, to be leaders in the beginning. 
We're called to also be protectors and providers because Ephesians 6 and 4 instructs us as fathers to raise our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so this means that fathers actually have a divine mandate from God to teach, to guide, and then to model godly behavior. It ain't about being manly. It's about being godly. Because if you're godly, you're going to be the man. You're going to be the man God has chosen you to be. Can I preach a little bit more? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but what happens is a lot of men fail to embrace this role, uh, whether it's due to the societal pressures, whether it's due to just personal failures, because we all have them. Maybe it's a lack of understanding, but many fathers are not fulfilling God's given role and purpose in their life. And so when you start to understand the purpose that God put you on this planet for, hallelujah, you can start understanding who you really are. See, it's all about identity. We in an identity crisis. When most men look in the mirror, they don't know who they are. Young to the old. White, black, don't discriminate. Although, if you look at the statistics, it's pretty sad. The rate of fatherlessness in the black homes uh, in the state of South Carolina um, far exceeds the rate of fatherlessness in the white homes. That's intentional. Planned Parenthood did that. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. You can't cancel this. Planned Parenthood set this up because they want to eliminate all you through abortion. And then you're going to vote for somebody that supports abortion? Bang! Wrong move, baby! Think God won't judge you on your vote. Watch. 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 But what do you do if some support only up to this and up to that? You support the one that lines up most to biblical values. Not party, biblical values. So I might support somebody who, who, who they believe up to heartbeat versus somebody says kill them at nine months in the womb. Lesser of two evils. I'm painting a picture for you that this is super intentional. We're in a crisis. It's an identity crisis that every system, every government, everything that's set up in this world is designed to destroy the family. And, baby, it starts with the dads. And I came here to let you know I don't care how much the world fights. Hallelujah. I don't care how much the world is combating the church and how much persecution we might have to go through. But I came to let you know that the father still has a purpose. Hallelujah. And if you can tap into your identity, hallelujah, you will tap into your power. If you can tap into your identity, you will be a purpose-filled man. Hallelujah. Walking in God's power and nothing will be able to stop you from what God has called you to do. And the church say, Amen. So it starts with men embracing their divine purpose, being a leader, providing direction, providing vision. I love Joshua. He said in 24 and 15, as for me, uh oh, and what my house? He didn't just say for me. He said for me and my house, what are we gonna do? We gonna serve the Lord. He didn't just say it; they did it, but he led it. We gotta be a leader. We gotta be a provider. Ensuring the physical, spiritual needs of the families met. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So fathers, we're called to provide for our own, y'all. And we are called to protect. So we got to guard our family. Come on. Against spiritual and physical harm. I got my AR-15 locked and loaded in my closet just in case when I say the blood of Jesus, that don't work, I'm going to bust it and say hallelujah anyhow. I don't care what you think. God didn't call me to let my family be murdered, baby. And let me tell you something, same in the church. Dylan Roof ain't coming up in here. He would have been shot on the spot. And then we would, and that's not a funny thing, but we would have done it because we call to protect. I'm gonna let a lion tear my family apart? No. 
Call me a sheepdog if you want. That's fine. Sheepdog protect the flock. We protect the flock. You got to protect your family. And I'm telling you, you, go, you might need that protection in these crazy times we living in. What's that law that just passed? You can just, I can, I ain't even got to have a license. I go get me a gun, walk down the street, like right, right there. Just, to, I can throw the AR on my back, walk down Somerville. They can't send me to jail. They can't even tell me, to, they can't even question me. See, see, I'm just showing you what protection. See, God is our father and he protects us. Hallelujah. There's many times I could have did that and I didn't have to because God always steps in. But I'm just saying, the mentality of a man is protector. Woo, Jesus. Well, I'm just going to hear ADT silent alarm. And are you going to wait? Okay. All right. Okay. Proverbs 4. I got scripture. <laughs> I got scripture. I got scripture that supports the Second Amendment. And I'm an NRA member. How about that? <laughs> Proverbs 14, 26 says, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Dads, our children ain't got to worry nothing about nothing if we're sitting up inside our house. Ain't nobody coming up in here unless they got the rightful permission to walk through them doors. And listen, my children might be the one that had to take them out, and they ready. Oh, 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 oh God. I know I'm preaching to the right church because y'all amen and all. Like, I don't, know, I don't want my kids to ever have to murder somebody, but you protecting family. But every one of my kids know how to pull that trigger and, and hit you where it count. Every one of them. Madison, go hunting with me in the woods. She, she said, I might shoot a deer in the eye. My God, baby. <laughs> Spiritual guidance. We got to lead them. It's okay. Take a deep breath, baby. Calm. It's good. That's all. I feel you. <laughs> My God. What that deer do to you? <laughs> get it right. Get it right. Shalimar just snore and sleep out in the woods with, with, with my wife. They all know how to put it. I'm saying, but see, the man creates that environment. Your home is what you do. The way your home is, is a result of the man. All right, I hear you. Move forward, Pastor. We got, we got, somebody's got an appointment at a dinner. The man got to eat a steak. <laughs> okay, so, but on a serious note, the ultimate model of what fatherhood looks like is found where? In God. Amen? It's always found in God. All through the scriptures, God is loving. Is he? God is what? Compassionate. God is a just father. He's very just. Look at Luke chapter 15. Not right now. Go back later. The parable of the who? Prodigal son. Look at how Jesus illustrates our father's heart in this parable for his children. God is always ready to forgive. God is at all times ready, not only to what? Forgive, but to restore and then to celebrate. You can't hold nothing against that man. You can't hold nothing against your children. You got to always be ready to forgive, restore, and celebrate. That'll preach right there on another Sunday. Ooh, forgive, restore, and celebrate, baby. Hallelujah. That's what he did with us. Forgave, restore, and the celebration is coming. Hallelujah. We're getting a little bit of it here. But the celebration is coming because our Father showed us what real, true love and grace look like. And so when we look to God as that perfect example then as earthly fathers, we can show unconditional love. You can love your children no matter how crazy they act. Mm-hmm. Right? You can, you can offer forgiveness pretty quickly, even in a very serious situation. You can uh, give the spiritual guidance that they need in order that you might be able to help deepen their understanding of God's love. And so, so when we do this, when we start to model fatherhood, we start to embrace that purpose, it transforms everything. 
We'll never be able to turn the statistics around out in the world. But if we, the church, turn the statistics around in the church, then it's going, trust me, it's going to impact the community in some shape, form, or fashion. We'll be able to move the needle a little bit here, a little bit there. You might be able to pull a father out of the situation he's in, introduce him to the love of Christ. He receives that forgiveness, that restoration, and now his whole family is together. Look what God did with me. Hallelujah. How he saved me when I was 18, 19. My daughter was born three, uh, three months after I got saved. Uh, hallelujah. I was absent in her life the first almost 10 years of her life uh, kind of in and out for various reasons hallelujah and I put it all on the enemy because he never wanted me to be there but look how God restored that thing uh, hallelujah look how God amen brought forgiveness to the package uh, and look how now my daughter saved uh, hallelujah my my nephew my son back there Michaela and Zion they're saved uh, AJ's getting ready to get the Holy Ghost Madison's getting ready to get saved look how God is a restorer of paths uh, to dwell in. Uh, he's the repairer of the breach. Uh, I don't care what the world has done. God is going to do more. God is going to restore. God is going to rebuild. Uh, God is going to take the marriage and mend it. He's going to take these relationships and fix it. It's his will. Why? Because we have to build stronger families. We got to create a nurturing environment. We got to create a supportive environment so that we, our, our family can grow. If we do that, then we're going to start raising these godly offspring. You will take your, your family to the restaurant and you think your kid is crazy, but then, you see, but then you go to the restaurant and say, my God, the Lord is in our family. Because some of these kids out there, I see, I'll be like, oh, my goodness. And you can't really honestly blame them because it's a lack of something in their life. But you, we, we often get compliments on how well-behaved our children are. All of that gives glory to God. We're raising godly kids. Am I saying they, they don't make mistakes? They make tons of mistakes just like all of us do. But we are called as dads, y'all. Hallelujah. T tap into this identity, this purpose, so we can raise godly offspring because godly offspring influence and impact society. It's, a, it's, it's an immense responsibility, brothers. It ain't, it ain't easy. That's why no man should be on an island by himself. That's why we need one another. You need me, I need you. Yeah. We can't do this on our own. And I love the ladies, but a woman can't teach me how to be a man. My, my wife will tell you. Some things I had to just give you to God. <laughs> so that you can become who God has chosen you to be. Everybody stand on your feet at this time. Whether, whether you're a father or you aspire to be one. Maybe, maybe you have a call as a woman to support fathers in the community. Come on. Because we need that. We need that. Women can support men who are fathers and really help them to come up to Christ. Yeah. You got to fulfill this role because our families are counting on this. You got to embrace the purpose and the power that God's given you. Leading with love. Yeah. Providing diligently. Whatever it takes to protect with a whole lot of courage. Man, you might be feeling called to step into your father role, right? You might just be feeling called to maybe help somebody else out. Whatever it is this morning, brothers, I want to pray for you first. There's some brothers in here, you, need just a, you just need to touch and agree. You ain't got to tell me nothing. I, I understand. I understand. If you're feeling it, I'm feeling it. I don't feel it. I know the burden of trying to provide. I get it. It's a, I said burden because I'm stressing weight, but it's my responsibility. But I understand the heaviness when it takes you know, to provide. You know how many times I wanted to walk off my job? And the only thing that kept me there was my family? <laughs> yeah. That's what men do, though. When we feel like quitting, that's the time we push forward. When fathers feel discouraged and feel like walking away, they need somebody to come and walk alongside them, encourage them. 
I want to encourage you, brothers. Come on, brothers. All you fathers, all you dads, come up. I want to pray for you this morning real quick. It ain't going to take long. You can go home and eat that steak and go to that restaurant. I know, I know. You want to watch a game and all that. I get that. I get that. I feel you. I, understand. I tell you, I understand. This is so much more important for you. Father, we thank you for this, this husband and this father. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask that you would give him a strength. Hallelujah. That only you can give him. Father, we only know what a father looks like when we see you. So, Lord, let him see you and let, it, let him see himself through your eyes. Hallelujah. And the church say in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I bless you, Dad. Woo, I bless you, husband. Hallelujah. I bless you, Dad. Hallelujah. I bless you, grandfather. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, let him forever see who he is. Woo, God, that he might fulfill the purpose and role that you placed him in this world for. In Jesus, everybody shout amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Where the women at? I need women praying right now. Hallelujah. Father, we bless this dad. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless him now, Lord. Hallelujah. This grandfather, we bless him, Lord. Oh, God, hallelujah. That as he continues in his, in his age, hallelujah, that he'll continue to walk faithfully. That he'll continue to walk as the man you've chosen him to be. In spite of maybe what he never had or couldn't find. You're his father. Oh, God, show him how, even now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, it will forever praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a good dad. You're a good father. Hallelujah. Oh, you know how to take care of your children. You know how to take care of your wife. Hallelujah. Father, bless him. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, pour out the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, counsel and discernment uh, that you would be able to show him when he doesn't know what to do, doesn't know how to handle it. Hallelujah. You are able to show us how and what to do and when and where and why. Oh, God, do it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep him in his family. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo, I thank you, Lord, for a leader, hallelujah, of his home, a leader in his marriage, a leader of his children, hallelujah, a leader in the church, a leader in his community, Father. Oh, God, hallelujah, continue to increase the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the counsel, the discernment, everything you need as a man, hallelujah, to fulfill, hallelujah, his purpose and walk in the power in the mighty name of Jesus in the church shout amen amen in the church shout amen oh I anoint you brother Marlon oh God hallelujah oh, that your marriage continues to strengthen hallelujah that you continue hallelujah to be that dad that he's called you to be hallelujah to be that counselor hallelujah to be that wise advisor hallelujah in the name of Jesus that you step into your destiny Woo, that you step into the power and purpose of God uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God, I thank you for this dad. I thank you for this husband. I thank you. Hallelujah. How he fathers his children, oh God. I thank you, Lord, how he knows how to provide. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you pour out into him, oh God, the same spirit. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah, that he might continue to learn and grow and become that man, that father, that husband that you called him to be, that leader in Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, yes. Lord, I thank you for his leadership. I thank you for his consistency. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, how you're blessing this husband right now. How you're blessing this father right now. Oh, God, cover him with your blood. Sanctify him with your spirit. Oh, God, hallelujah. Continue to speak to him through your word. And we'll forever bless in your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. The way go, we go. Oh, you are dead. Lord, enable me. Dad. Look what God did. I know you ain't forgot, but look at that. Y'all got to tell y'all testimony sooner or later because somebody needs to hear. And so, if God gave you your son, it's because you're called to be a dad. 
and you can do this and you're doing a good job. No. Quit beating yourself up when you don't always I'm get it right. Quit beating yourself up when you can't do what you know you need to do, but you're struggling. Father, I ask that you pour out the spirit of grace in his life. Hallelujah. As he continues, hallelujah, to seek you. Hallelujah. As he continues to, to reach to you, that you would show him how to be that man, that husband, that father. Hallelujah. To his children, to his family, Lord, that provider, that protector, that encourager, that listener, that leader, oh God. I anoint him for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. He is called to do it, and you, you will accomplish it. Hallelujah. God will say, well done, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, son, son, son. I anoint you in the presence of your heavenly father. I anoint you in the presence of your earthly father. I anoint you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not fall into any statistic. You will not be what the world wants you to be. You will be who God has ordained you to be. From the womb of your mother, God put you in this earth at the time he put you here, son, that you might do exactly what God has called you to do. And so I cover you with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And I anoint you that you might walk as a son and receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father in Jesus name Amen I love you man dad Oh I love you dad good to see you Hallelujah he's a keeper Oh he's a keeper Hallelujah Lord I thank you for keeping him Lord Hey Lord, the road may have been rough Hallelujah Hey he's been in some dark valleys oh God Lord, you're his father, hallelujah. And Lord, I ask you now, hallelujah, that you would anoint this man, hallelujah, with a newfound strength, oh God, hallelujah, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, hey, that you would, that you would saturate him with your presence, hey God, hallelujah, wash him in your blood, oh God, sanctify him for your use, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we glorify his name, amen, hallelujah. Oh, I anoint you, Dad. I anoint you, Husband. I anoint you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. He that has begun a good work in you shall complete it. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. The resurrected Savior anoint you this morning. Hey, that you might finish your course. That you might walk well pleasing to God. Hey. In the mighty name of Jesus, give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. I give you a father's anointing. I give you a father's anointing. Hallelujah. I give you a father's anointing. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, oh God. Take this young man. Hallelujah. Oh, show him who he is. Hallelujah. According to your will, hallelujah. According to your plan, hallelujah. According to your destiny, hallelujah. Not according to circumstance. Not according to condition, oh God. But according to what you planned out for him before the world was formed. I anoint him, Lord. In your name, Jesus. You can put your glory in Jesus' name. I give you a father's anointing. Hallelujah. Hey, every good and perfect gift comes from your father in heaven. Uh, hey, the Lord says, uh, every thought I have for you is good and not evil uh, because I've given you a future. Oh, I anoint him for his future, oh God. Uh, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, give him ears to hear what your spirit, oh God, uh, has to say to him. Uh, to his heart, to his spirit, oh God, and show him exactly what it is you call him to do, Lord. I anoint him for his future. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, son. Thank God for you. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, church, put them hands together. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who shed a higher? Hey, God, I bless him now, Lord. Hey, I bless him with a father's blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, anoint him for this, Lord. And continue to strengthen him, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Hallelujah. It's unto you. Hallelujah. It's unto you, hallelujah. It's unto you, hallelujah. God anoint him, Lord, to receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. I bless him now, Lord, hallelujah. And anoint him for it. Hey, God, oh, show him who he is. In Jesus' name, amen. And the church, put your hands together. Ooh, hallelujah. Will be anybody else I want to Come on up if there's anybody else from you. You're of my Thank you for being an amazing wife, an amazing mother. Greater, you are. Greater, greater work shall thou do. Greater, hallelujah. Yes, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Oh God, bless her now, Lord. Use her for your glory. I protect her. Hallelujah. In your name, Jesus. I cover her with your blood. Hallelujah. Hey, anoint her for what's coming. Hey, hallelujah. I anoint her for her future. I anoint her for her destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Oh God, touch her now. Lord, according to your will, Father. Hey, give her encouragement. Oh God, give her joy unspeakable. To fill up the wind. Hey, fill her. Hallelujah. Fill her. Hey, Shabbahaya. Fill her, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh God, hallelujah. Bless you, daughter. I give you a father's blessing. Hallelujah. I give you a father's blessing. Hallelujah. Hey, I mean, everything you do is going to be blessed. Hey, I call you into your destiny, woman of God. I call you into your purpose, woman of God. Hey, I come against the enemy that will try to destroy you. I come against the trick of the enemy. Hallelujah. That might discourage you. Hallelujah. Keep her focused, oh God. Hey, on the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. For your glory. Supporter of your husband, hallelujah. Mother to your children, hallelujah. You're doing a beautiful job, hallelujah. I anoint you for greater. I anoint you, hallelujah. It won't feel heavy. It won't feel heavy. It will not feel heavy. For my bird is the life, says the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, you heal. you healing, 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 you healing, 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 Father, Hallelujah. hey, Father, I bless her. I bless her with a Father's blessing. Hey, that anointing that brings peace. 
that anointing that gives you strength that anointing that comforts you when you're alone that anointing that's right there when you feel rejected hallelujah that presence of your father that will never leave you never forsake you hallelujah i anoint you this morning with the father's blessing hallelujah oh daughter of the king hallelujah daughter of the most high hallelujah hey from the crown of your head hallelujah to the soles of your feet hallelujah be made whole be made whole be made a whole spirit hallelujah soul and body be whole in jesus name and the church say amen yeah god oh hallelujah yes lord hallelujah yes lord hallelujah hey from the bottom from the bottom hallelujah hey, come on, to the death of my soul, yes, Lord. Hey, you shall, you shall, you shall Come receive everything you're here with me. From the bottom, from the bottom of my heart, oh yeah, to the depths to of the my depths soul. Brother, brother, Zion, brother Zion Johnson, come on. 